Hello and welcome to my channel, I Went to Lose Gaming. I have been wanting to talk about EULA, aka the End User License Agreement, for ages now. So let's finally take a look at it. Please read this Terms of Service carefully, including our privacy policies. This Terms of Service Agreement is a legally binding agreement between Mihoyo Limited- No, not that one, this one. Ever since Eula was leaked forever and a half ago, I have been itching to talk about her since. And now that Mihoyo has finally dropped her character introduction trailer- Shut up and take my money! Eula Lawrence, formerly of the extinguished Lawrence clan, has severed her ties with her family to join the Knights of Favonius as the Spindrift Knight. I mean, the Sneeze Drift Knight, and is now the captain of the Knights of Favonius Reconnaissance Company. In this video, I will be providing a pre-release analysis for the upcoming physical Claymore DPS, the Sneeze Drift Knight of Favonius. As always, with any and all pre-release analyses, take everything with a giant grain of salt. So without further ado, let's go over her talents first. Her normal attack is known as the Favonius Blade Work, Edel. Edel? Edel. Her basic attack appears to have 5 inputs and hit 7 times. Eula's normal attack looks to be her bread and butter. As for her charged attack, it strongly resembles Deluke's, and we all know how much of a meme his charged attack is. <laughs> Eula's charge attack probably won't be used much, but I could be completely wrong about that. Eula's elemental skill, Ice Tide Vortex, deals cryo damage and gives Eula a stack of Grimheart. Her cape appears to glow with varying intensities depending on how many stacks of Grimheart she has, which can be up to two stacks. Eula's Hold E will consume her Grimheart stacks, dealing AoE cryo damage, and also reducing her enemy's cryo and physical resistances. Additional ice swords called Ice World Brands fall from the sky, one for each stack of Grimheart, also dealing cryo damage. Eula's Burst, Glacial Illumination, has this incredible casting animation and then creates a new pet, a Lightfall Sword. This pet sword follows Eula around and for every normal attack, elemental skill, or elemental burst from Eula, it adds a stack to Chunchumaru. Each stack has a 0.1 second cooldown and once its duration ends, it explodes and deals damage based on the number of stacks obtained. Switching out causes Chun Chun Mar to explode prematurely. So this brings us to the next thing to talk about, and that is what might be an optimal rotation for her. Over at the Eula Mains Discord, there has been a lot of heated discussion over what the optimal rotation for her is. The goal of Eula's kit is to build up as many stacks as possible during her burst duration, while also applying her physical resistance shred. After inquiring around the Discord, the current theory for her optimal rotation is as follows. It's N2, E, Q, E, N4, dash cancel, N2, hold E, N2, and then her burst should explode. This is the currently theorized optimal rotation for gaining the maximum number of stacks for her burst while also applying the resistance shred from her hold E. In total, this rotation should be able to achieve 12 to 14 stacks for Chunchu Maru. But keep in mind, without her being released yet, this is all just a theory, a Chunchu Maru theory. So before we calculate her anticipated damage with various weapons, let's take a look at her artifact options. As usual, my numbers are damage maximized numbers, I wrote an algorithm that shuffles around artifact substats and main stats to find the optimal combination for a character weapon combination. Generally speaking, if you spend 6,000 to 10,000 resin, you can reach 60 to 90% of the numbers in my charts. Eula will be at level 90, constellation 0, and her talents will all be at level 9. Keep in mind that all these numbers are subject to change and are simply guesstimations of how much damage she can do. Either way, the artifact should perform similarly upon release. Since Eula appears to be a physical attacker that also does big physical damage with her burst, a few sets stand out immediately. The most glaringly obvious one is the newly released artifact set, the Pale Flame. The Pale Flame 2-piece provides 25% physical damage, and the 4-piece set requires you to hit an enemy twice with your elemental skill to obtain 18% attack and an additional 25% physical damage. Eula's E appears to have very low cooldown and potentially another mechanic to reduce her E's cooldown, so she should be able to stack the Pale Flame quickly and efficiently. The Pale Flame seems to be the clear winner compared to the other options Eula has for physical damage. But do keep in mind that 2-piece Pale Flame and 2-piece Bloodstained is a really good option as well. So if you're 
Pale Flame set isn't that great, then you should consider mixing and matching your set bonuses accordingly. Since Eula is an attack scaling physical DPS character, it might shock you, but you want attack percent on her timepiece, what? a physical damage goblet, okay. and finally a crit rate or crit damage circlet. Yeah. For substats, it's the usual as much crit rate and crit damage as possible, yeah. with some attack percent and energy recharge sprinkled in. So now that we've established her artifacts, let's analyze her weapon options. Here is the full chart with the whale options included. Again, this is for a Constellation Zero Eula with damage maximized artifacts. And for Eula, I decided to calculate the full anticipated damage rotation. Because in Eula's case, the full damage rotation heavily affects which weapons work the best for her. Let's start with the Song of Broken Pines, which is the upcoming new 5-star Claymore. Apparently, it will be similar to the LG for the end and will add attack speed and attack percent after hitting something 4 times with a basic attack. If its buff is up at Refinement 1, it's probable that Eula will be able to squeeze in an extra third part of her normal attack combo at some point, yielding 2 extra hits for her burst. Anyway, we don't know that for sure, so these are my guesstimations. But it appears that the Song of Broken Pines will be a great option for Eula. Next, let's talk about the Wallet's Gravestone. Unfortunately, the attack buff on it is situational, but even with its attack buff down, it's still a very solid weapon. Overall, the Wolf's Gravestone should be comparable to the Song of Pines. The Unforged is also a decent option, especially with a shield support like Zhongli or even Diona. As for the 4-star weapons, the Serpent Spine should be good as well, and like the Unforged, I recommend a shield support to maintain its stacks. The Black Cliff Slasher is, as always, a reasonable option, but obtaining kill stacks is often situational. For 100% free-to-play options, both the Snow Tomb Star Silver and the Prototype Archaic are great options for Eula. As for which one is better, it's actually hard to say and it's dependent on your team comp, the enemy, your damage buffs, and so many other variables. So really, pick whichever one you like more. I will say that the Prototype Archaic is more universal thanks to its attack percent stat versus physical damage on the Snow Tomb Star Silver, and thus the Prototype Archaic can be used on other non-physical DPS Claymore characters more effectively than the Snow Tomb Star Silver can. Next, I wanted to quickly talk about Eula's teammates. Eula is looking to be a surprisingly flexible character when it comes to teammates. I'm not willing to say what her best team composition is, because that is dependent on the situation. However, there are some characters that stand out. Electro characters seem like a natural fit thanks to their ability to apply superconduct, which is a 40% reduction in physical resistance. Fischl is the best in terms of uptime versus screen time ratio and is the best off-field single target electro DPS option. Beidou is similar to Fischl but is reliant on her high energy cost burst, but she also does more DPS to multiple targets than Fischl does. Lisa is also a good option and is able to reliably amplify Eula's damage more than the aforementioned option since she is able to equip the Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayers and she applies defense down with her burst. All in all, any of these Electro characters will be great for proccing superconduct with Eula. How do I personally plan to run Eula? For general use purposes, I plan to run a double cryo, double geo team, with my second cryo character of choice being Rosaria. Rosaria is able to provide Eula with up to 30% crit rate thanks to the cryo party resonance buff, and Rosaria's burst, adding up to 15% of her own crit rate to the entire team. With the Favonius Lance, Rosaria is able to provide Eula with a lot of extra energy as well. If you have a Constellation 6 Rosaria, she also applies 20% physical resistance shred. As for double geo, Zhongli allows Eula to not dodge or worry about getting hit while also applying 20% physical resistance shred, and the last slot can go to either Geo Traveler or Albedo. Some other characters that stand out are Bennett for his damage amp and healing, Xinyan for her physical resistance shred, physical damage buff, and ability to equip the Wolf's Gravestone for support. Diona is also a good option for her shield, cryo energy particle generation, healing, and cryo resonance. So do I think Eula will be good? My initial impression is that Eula will be amazing and fairly competitive to Ganyu, Hu Tao, and Xiao. Eula will of course be focused on physical damage, despite sharing the same cryo vision as Ganyu. So there is probably not much overlap between her or any of the current top 3 DPS characters. 
Each of these characters will have different situations where they excel at, and Eula's strongest window is probably during a 10 to 15 second interval where she starts with her burst. Her burst damage is backloaded, which is usually a disadvantage. However, in theory, if something has enough HP, like around 2 to 3 million HP, she should be able to output enough damage in 10 to 15 seconds to take it out, whereas a child nuking it or even a Hutao nuking it might struggle to take it out in the same amount of time. There are also situations where backloading some damage is actually beneficial. For example, you can knock out first form child with Eula's basic attacks while building stacks for her burst, and then her burst can explode instantly taking out second form child. But generally speaking, backloaded damage is a disadvantage. I will be showcasing Eula on the same day that she is released in North America at Constellation Zero with the prototype Archaic. So be sure to subscribe if you'd like to see that. And of course, if everything I've said is wrong, then at the very least, the Sneeze Drift Knight will have the best thighs in all of Teyvat. Thanks for watching. As always, I appreciate every single one of you. This is I Went to Lose, signing out.